Hello, lovely internet strangers. Welcome. This is episode eight. I haven't made one of these in a while, so I figured it was time to make another one. I've gotten a lot of good feedback on this series. It's one of the things that kind of makes my channel unique, telling these personal stories from my life. Now in the past, most of these episodes have been about the more negative aspects of my journey. So today I wanted to share a positive story from my journey, one that can maybe give a little bit of hope to those of you out there feeling alone, feeling isolated, because I was once like you. There was a period in my life on this intellectual journey where I felt incredibly alone, incredibly isolated. I'm lucky to not be in that place anymore because I have built my tribe, so to speak. And so I thought I would share those stories of building my tribe, starting with this story about how I met my first red-pilled friend. Look, I know it's a cringy, clickbaity title, but I gotta do something to feed the algorithm, God cut me a little bit of slack. Now, in order to set the context for this story, I first have to mention my alternate OkCupid profile, which I have mentioned a few times on this channel. I plan to do a separate video about the experience I had when I made that profile and all the messages I received, but I met the friend who is the subject of this story through that alternate OkCupid profile. Now, for those of you who are wondering what the hell I'm talking about with the alternate OkCupid profile, here's the short version. A guy I met and dated through OkCupid dumped me 99%. I'm sure it was because of my political beliefs, because of discussions that we had about politics, which he forced me to have and I tried desperately to avoid. And so after that very scarring experience, I wondered what would happen if I made a different profile stating exactly what I was looking for and who I was. The caveat being that I did not show photos of my face because the poly dating scene is pretty ideologically lockstep for the most part. And my profile was linked to my husband's and I didn't want to ruin his chances of finding people or ruin our chances of finding people to date together. So this was back when you could still put faceless photos on OkCupid, which they've cracked down on now. And I will admit that these were fairly attractive photos, but despite that, the majority of the overwhelming number of messages that I received were not things like, hey, nice tits. It was things like, hey, have you checked out Jordan Peterson? Now, I don't have the original text for that profile because OkCupid nuked that profile for some reason that they never explained to me, but I had managed to copy the text of the profile a little bit further along. So it's not exactly the same, but I know that some aspects of the profile were identical to when I created it. And I think I know which sections those are, so I'm just gonna focus on those sections to set up the rest of the story. So I describe myself thusly in the profile, former feminist and leftist, currently closest to classical liberal, though I and my views don't fit neatly into boxes. Firm believer in the sanctity of free speech, big on personal responsibility. When I grow up, I want to be half as badass and brilliant as Camille Paglia. And I describe what I was looking for in these terms. After discovering that in the non-monogamous scene especially, but also NYC dating in general, it seems you have to subscribe to all the correct ideologies to satisfy a potential match, I thought I would create a second profile in hopes of attracting someone a bit different. I'm not seeking someone who thinks exactly like me. I don't care what your political beliefs or ideologies are, as long as you can accept my right to hold mine as well. I'd like to find someone who's open to discussing topics of gender, race, sexuality, inequality, politics, etc. With a truly open mind. A tall ask, I know. OkCupid now has all these stupid prompts that you can pick and choose from to fill out for your profile, but I was on it back when everyone had the same profile prompts to respond to. So for what I'm doing with my life, I said, the above makes me sound pretty serious, but I'm honestly a pretty goofy and fun-loving person. Some favorite activities include playing video games and hosting movie nights, proceeding on an ongoing journey to soak up as much knowledge as I can before I die, and to seek truth at every turn. I often find myself posing these three questions delivered to me by the brilliant mind that is Thomas Sowell. Compared to what, at what cost, and what hard evidence do you have? For the prompt, I spend a lot of time thinking about, I said, why so many people find it acceptable to present opinions as facts on both sides of the political divide, the hypocrisy of the political left, and the takeover of mainstream culture by progressives, and also outrage culture. For the prompt, you should message me if you're okay with dating someone in an open relationship, you are open-minded in the true sense of the term. For example, you'd watch a talk by Milo Yiannopoulos and consider his opinions and arguments, even if you ultimately still disagreed with or hated him afterward. You truly believe in free speech. That is, you don't believe in punching Nazis where Nazi equals person stating beliefs you find offensive or abhorrent, but that aren't inciting violence. You find this video as hilarious as I do, and it was a link to Punch a Nazi by Chris Reagan. If you have not watched that video, go give it a watch. It's great. You don't let your feelings get in the way of facts, or at the very least, you're prepared to let your feelings take a hit in the pursuit of truth. You don't need to share all the same views or agree on everything to have a good time and enjoy a solid connection. 
protection. All right, so that's basically what was in my profile when I made it. I made the profile in March of 2017 and the messages just poured in. And like I said, most of them were not, hey baby, hey beautiful, and so on. Although I got plenty of those, obviously. Most of them were just honestly relieved to see my profile, to see a woman with a reasonable profile that wasn't talking about how they spend a lot of time thinking about how to smash the patriarchy, etc. Some of them had a hard time believing I was real. My friend was actually one of those. I'm gonna call him Garrett. That is not his real name, but for the purposes of making this storytelling easier, I'm going to give him that pseudonym. So Garrett messaged me pretty soon after I made the profile. He messaged me on March 17th, 2017, and he said, funny story, I watched Ruben and Reagan in a Joy Soul, and I had little to no hope of ever seeing a non-monogamous person on OkCupid who would have anything remotely fair to say about Milo until I saw you'd visited my profile just now. I guess I must have mentioned Dave Rubin in my profile because I was a fan of him at the time, not anymore. And this is back when OkCupid showed people that you'd viewed their profile. It was a different time. For the record, I think Milo is brilliant but obnoxious, yet still I love his trolling style. If you were actually a real person, I honestly think we'd have things to talk about for days. Just saying. Genuinely curious how and when you began backing away from the leftist paradigm. It's been a very long, slow journey for me. Also, Jordan Peterson spent any time with his lectures? If not, I cannot recommend Maps of Meaning on his YouTube channel highly enough. Life-changing stuff. He was one of many men to suggest that I check out Jordan Peterson. Now, I did not message him back until April 2nd, so that was a couple of weeks later. I was sifting through the pile of messages I was getting, and the thing that stood out to me was the fact that he mentioned Chris Reagan. I had a ton of people responding to the Milo thing, telling me I should check out Jordan Peterson, commenting on Polya, but he was the only one who referenced Chris Reagan. And I was really into Chris Reagan back then. I'm still a fan of him now, but I was really into him back then. And that's when he was doing Social Justice the Musical and the Punch a Nazi video had just come out. And you know, humor is like such a subjective thing. And I find that I, you know, get along a little bit better with people that have a similar view as I do on humor. So I was like, okay, if he likes Chris Reagan, then we at least have something to talk about. And he was Polly, so that was an extra point as far as I was concerned. So I replied to his message and I said, many have asked me if I'm a real person. And in fact, I am. I've had a similarly slow journey away from the left and feminism. I would say I started calling myself a feminist in college. So almost a decade ago now, I sank further and further into third wave feminism. And although I don't know that I was ever a full blown SJW, I was certainly an ally to their causes. I was deep in the trenches. So it was a very slow journey out that was mostly started when I met my primary partner back in 2014. He's an anarcho capitalist libertarian. And while I'm still not one, at least back then I wasn't, he's incredibly intelligent and well-read and educated on history, philosophy, politics, and science, and just how the world works in general. And I realized that after my college education, there was so much I didn't know. So it kind of came from wanting to argue with him about beliefs I held at the time, about feminism, etc., and wanting to know what I was talking about. I'm the kind of person who wants to investigate everything and easily falls down rabbit holes. Don't ask me to quantify how many hours of my life I've lost to TV tropes. I was aware of Jordan Peterson because I've been following the situation on college campuses pretty closely, but had not actually listened to a lecture. A bunch of guys on here messaged me about him, so I went and stumbled onto Maps of Meaning before I even read this message, funnily enough. I was an English and psych major, and I've been pretty heavily in a period of economic study, so Jordan Peterson's brought me back to my true love, haha. He's pretty fucking brilliant in my opinion. I could go on and on, but maybe if you asked a more specific question, I could tailor my response. Anyway, I resonated with a lot of what you said in your profile, and do think we'd have a lot to talk about. I'd be happy to meet for a drink sometime without expectations. He replied, hey, I'm really happy to hear back from you. A drink sometime without expectations sounds great to me. I think it's so telling and so interesting that you got as many enthusiastic responses as you did. Insofar as your journey away from leftism is concerned, I suppose I'm curious to know if you can pinpoint any moment or event in your life when you began to walk back from the SJW reality tunnel. Was there something you read, heard, or watched, or some argument you heard for the first time, and something that just clicked in your brain? I'm generally very interested in people's intellectual journeys away from the left because I see it happening in the culture and it's one of the few cultural trends I see right now that gives me hope. I'm abridging some of these messages, FYI. So he said, even until my early 30s, I took for granted that people on the left were somehow smarter and morally superior to everyone else. Coming to terms with the reality of the situation has been isolating, but also liberating and empowering. And I replied, I'm not sure if there was one moment. It was more a series of moments, but I will say that listening to Miley Yiannopoulos' college lectures definitely forced me to consider some uncomfortable truths about the left and to wrestle more closely with political correctness. But my journey away from the left is a long story I could go on and on about. So when we grab drinks, I can tell you as much as you want until you tell me to shut up. Haha. Ha. So we met up, we had drinks, and we just talked 
for a few hours about our intellectual journeys and the conversation just flowed. We clicked immediately and we started dating from there because it seemed like the thing to do. I mean, guy, girl, both poly, attraction, etc. But I'm not really going to talk about many details of the dating aspect of our relationship because the important thing that I want to talk about is our friendship, which was always there from the beginning and always more important than the dating side of our relationship. And we continue to be friends, even though we have put aside the dating part of our connection. So we exchanged email addresses at the end of the first date so that we could exchange links and start a discussion. And we did. And we would email each other furiously back and forth essays at the beginning, just all these thoughts pouring out of us. I think fondly back on those days. And, you know, I've still got that like treasure trove of emails to look back on and see how my thoughts were evolving. Now, the thing that was so game changing for me about meeting Garrett was that I finally felt less alone because at that point I was not calling myself an anti-feminist and I had not become a libertarian yet, but I had definitely left feminism. I was still working in the publishing industry and I felt like I was one day away from being found out for wrong think and getting fired and just not being able to relate to anyone, not being able to talk to anyone. At this point, I had opened up to my female friend who was still friends with me despite learning about my wrong think beliefs, but she wasn't someone who like agreed with me on these things. You know, she wasn't someone that I could commiserate with. She wasn't someone who was going through the same experience that I was going through. Like I had my husband to talk to about these things generally, about the things that I was learning and my thoughts on everything, but he couldn't relate. My husband is not red-pilled. And what I mean by that is to be red-pilled, you need to have been in the matrix and then someone pulls you out. My husband was never in the matrix. He's like one of those kids that was born in Zion. So you can tell him about what it was like to be in the matrix and the experience of being pulled out of it, but he has no idea what you're talking about. He can understand it intellectually, but not emotionally, if that makes sense. So it was great to have him, obviously, although it's really all his fault. Meeting him was the genesis for my red pilling, although I don't believe he ever had any intentions of red pilling me in any sense. Just a happy accident for him. So Garrett was someone who had gone through something very similar to me. I would say he was a little bit further along and he had interests in different subjects than me, but he was also someone that was on the left, had certain beliefs, had certain views, and then had the veil pulled back to see reality and experience that whole painful feeling of isolation from people you were formerly really close to. And it doesn't mean that you aren't so close to them in certain ways, but you feel like you're hiding from them now in a way, or the things that they say sound differently to you. You know, you're cringing on the inside or wishing you could say something, but not wanting to rock the boat on that connection. He was involved in the theater scene and that was just as lefty woke as the publishing industry. So we could relate in that sense. And he just became like this person walking in parallel with me on the intellectual journey. Our intellectual interests had a lot of overlap. We were following a lot of the same people. So he had been a Jordan Peterson fan before Peterson became known. And the two of us would geek out on Peterson, trade videos, content from other people in the IDW crowd, all kinds of articles and videos and just inundated each other with content. And then when we would hang out, we would just spend our time talking about all that stuff. You know, now we talk about the more mundane details of our everyday lives. But for a long time, pretty much all we talked about when we met up was the things that we couldn't talk about as easily with other people. He is the most open-minded person I've ever met. When I use the word open-minded to describe him, I use it with absolutely no caveats. I know that I could tell him absolutely anything and he would not judge me. He would not make fun of me. I could tell him that I think horses came from the moon and he would be like, that's interesting. I haven't heard that one before. Where'd you hear that? And just want to know all about it. Doesn't mean he would believe me and agree that horses came from the moon, but we would have a whole conversation about it. Whenever I investigate things, I think I end up kind of taking on those beliefs temporarily. Like I have to put myself in the other person's shoes and figure out how they came to their conclusions, why they think the way they do. And in that process, I keep myself open to the possibility that they're right about something, that they know something that I don't, that maybe this idea that sounds crazy to other people is actually true. Because how many things that I believe that turned out not to be true and how many things that I thought were totally
totally ridiculous or wrong did I end up believing. So I became more of a radical skeptic type, I suppose. But he's the one person that I could definitely engage in that landscape with. And he's been a fan of reading about all the different kind of conspiracy subcultures for a long time. He actually performed a really brilliant one-man show on that topic. And I say that with genuine praise because I'm a super harsh critic, even to my friends. Now, there was a period of time a few months after we met and had jumped into kind of that dating framework where, for reasons I won't get into, we needed to take a break. And we completely didn't communicate for about three months. And it was awful. I had only known him for a few months, but he had so quickly become that person that I always wanted to send the latest Peterson video to or talk about whatever thing had happened in our spheres of interest. You know, we were going back and forth during the Evergreen saga, during the infamous Jordan Peterson, Kathy Newman interview. And so all of a sudden I was left without this person that I had come to rely on walking this intellectual path with me. And luckily we managed to come out of that break, reconnect, and the first time we saw each other after that break, we actually went to this panel that was put on by Spiked, the UK magazine. It was a panel that featured Brett Weinstein and also Brendan O'Neill. I'm a huge fan of Brendan. I also think Laura Kipnis was on the panel. If you don't know her, look her up. So it was cool to like experience that together. So that was in November of 2017, I believe. And then in January of 2018, Jordan Peterson came to New York City and we got tickets and we saw the lecture and then we got in line and got our copies of 12 Rules for Life signed and we got to shake his hand and I told him what an impact he'd had on my life because this was back when he was not big enough that you couldn't still just get in the line and get your book signed. This was before that was like a VIP experience so we were kind of lucky to do that before he really blew up in fame. So it was really cool to experience that with someone who was as much of a fan as I was at that time. I'm not as big a fan of Peterson anymore. I don't hate him or anything. I'm just no longer the obsessive fangirl that I was for a period of time. But Peterson will always be special to me in a certain way because he was one of the first things that Garrett and I bonded over. So it's been over four years now since we met, which feels like so long. Makes me feel a little bit old. Where does the time go? But although we shelved the dating part of our lives because he moved on both to fatherhood and to living in a different place and he's in a different phase of his life now. He's still one of my dearest closest friends and I can't envision a future where we're not friends and we're still both on our separate intellectual journeys although we're in a different phase than we were when we met. It's interesting our journeys really have gone in parallel where we both kind of started to pull away from a lot of the content that we were consuming and shifting our focus to other topics, other creators, even discovering some of the same people at the same time. When I started out on my journey, I was literally tearing down everything I thought I knew to be true and kind of starting from the ground up. So I took a big sky approach, just listening to everything and everyone from all corners, super extreme to more centrist. And so there were a lot of people that I followed at the beginning, like Ben Shapiro or Steven Crowder, who after a while I was like, yeah, I get what your thing is about. And I don't feel like listening to any more of it is really like helping me learn more or understand things more. So I started gravitating toward other content. Thanks for helping me. Go with God. I need to consume other content now. Neither of us have the time or energy anymore to send flurries of essays back and forth, so we have an app we use to send each other video messages since we can't always coordinate our schedules to get on the phone all the time, and we'll still send each other the occasional video or article and share our thoughts. And even during periods where one or both of us are busy and we end up talking less, just know Knowing that he's out there makes me feel good. Just knowing that there's that person out there who sometimes looks around and still feels like so disconnected from the world, from certain people that we're talking to. And it's just good to know that like, I'm not alone in that. I'm not crazy. I'm not the weird one. Or if I am, there are other weird ones and he's one of them and he's special because he was the first one that I found. And it's really cool that being authentic worked. Like, yes, I hid my face and I didn't use 
my real name in the profile. I used my real name when we met, but I spoke out into the universe who I was and what I was about and what I was looking for. And the universe spoke back and attracted the right kind of person. Like my advice to other women whenever I've been able to give it is that you don't need to attract everyone. You don't need to appeal to the widest common denominator. Most people are looking for one life partner and they're looking for a handful of quality friends. And life is too short and your energy too finite to bother trying to maintain relationships with people that you can't really be yourself with. And the older I get, the more I believe that. To the point that of the people that I actually call my friends, not people that I would say are acquaintances that I met during my time in publishing or something like that. All the people that I call my actual friends and all the family members that I'm closest to, they all know who I am. I'm not hiding. In the partner dance scene with my publishing contacts, I still have to hide, quote unquote, but that's not as big of a deal to me because I I can kind of just, I don't know, compartmentalize that. As long as the people that I spend the most time with, the people that I trust with my thoughts and fears and my emotions, as long as those people accept my authentic self, all the parts of me, then I feel pretty good. You know, I look around at my life now and the people I surround myself with, the people that I can count on, it's a good list of people. Like this guy, Garrett, it's not just that he's a good partner for intellectual discussions, but he's just a good person person with integrity. He often acts as my moral compass. He is a father now and he's such a thoughtful and empathetic person and an open-minded person, like I said. And I look into his daughter's future and see nothing but good. And he had good mate selection. His wife is also an amazing person. And I feel blessed to know someone that I can be intellectually open with and just open with about the rest of my life. And that if someone asked me, do you know that person? I could stand up and say, yeah, I do. He's one of my closest friends. He's an amazing guy. And that applies to the rest of the people in my tribe too. So I may or may not tell stories about creating the rest of my tribe, but I will consider it. I hope you enjoyed this story. I hope it makes you feel like all hope is not lost and it is possible to find people that you can connect with. I know it's not easy, but you don't need to find that many people. You really don't need that many close friends. If you can even find one, he was the only one of my friends that I could talk to about this stuff for a long time and it sustained me. It really did. He buttressed me against the friends that I lost because of being honest about who I was and what I thought. Funnily enough, he was actually the reason for me losing one of my friendships because I wanted to tell her about this guy that I had met, but I wanted to explain why he was so special. And the only way I could do that would be to tell her that I had gone on this intellectual journey and that my beliefs had changed and that was what this guy and I connected about. And that was a genesis for her dumping me upon learning of my former feminist ways. And uh, yeah, I made a couple of videos about that. So having him while I went through that made me feel like, okay, she wasn't really your friend and you don't need her in your life. There are other people out there who you can be real with, who will like you for you. And this guy is one of them. So keep hope alive that there will be more. And while it's always preferable to have these people that you can meet up with in person, I will also say that, you know, making this channel has connected me with a lot of really amazing people that I'm happy to be connected to via the internet. Some of you just through comments, some of you we have personal correspondence going on, and I love that. You all know who you are, and thank you. So that's going to be it for this video. Thank you for watching. If you liked this video, please give it a like. If you'd like to see more, please subscribe, and I will have more content for you very soon.